which NFL teams are making the playoffs, and who's staying home. It's who's in, who's out on 97.3 ESPN-FM, South Jersey's football station. You never can get a handle on this league, can you? Who's in, who's out. These are the 12 teams we think are going to make the playoffs. After eight weeks of the NFL, who we think will make the playoffs. I mean, these lists have evolved and changed so much over the first eight weeks of the season. That's what makes this league so entertaining, guys. So, in the AFC East, for the first time, really, you actually have to start maybe considering somebody else. I'm not saying you're going to make a change. But in the AFC East, you've got the Patriots at 6-2, and two, the Bills at 5-2, and two, and the Dolphins at 4-3. and three. three teams at play. Is anybody bold enough? to circle the wagons of the Buffalo Bills. They're in my who's in, who's out somewhere, but they're not in the AFC East division winner. Let's put it that way. Uh, I, have the, I have the Patriots in there. Yeah, I got the Patriots too. I, As long as Tom Brady and Bill Belichick are there, I can't move away from them. I got the Patriots too. In the North, this one, Steelers 6-2, and two, Ravens 4-4. Four and four. Anybody off the Steelers yet? Not here. Not here. Not here either. I mean, you look at this team, they're finally finding their way. It may have taken them six, seven games, but they finally found their way. And unexpected weapons. Juju Smith-Schuster blowing up. Juju Smith-Schuster, guys, is the youngest player with this many touchdowns in his rookie season. He's also the only player under the age of 21 with this many touchdowns in NFL history. In the South, there's everybody in play here pretty much except for uh, if you want to start uh, taking out, uh, well, except for the Colts, but uh, in the South, you've got Tennessee four and three, Jacksonville four and three, Houston three and four. Pete Thompson. This one was tough for me, but I have to go back to Tennessee, despite the fact that they lost. I give them points for going to Seattle and playing the Seahawks as tough as they did. I just, you know, you, you basically to me that's a two horse race. I'm sticking with Tennessee despite the loss. I am sticking with the Texans despite their loss. I think that this trade that they gave out Dwayne Brown, but they've been playing with Dwayne Brown the whole season. It doesn't matter. They get Jeremy Lane, a legitimate cornerback, to help with their depth. The defense needed some help anyway. Deshaun Watson's absolutely amazing. I am sticking with the Texans. Uh, I got the Texans too, by the way. What they did in Seattle the other night, their defense is an issue, though. I mean, they lost two pretty key contributors on that defensive side of the ball. But Deshaun Watson, I think... They, that division, all of a sudden, you've got Mariota and Watson and Luck when he comes back. you got three guys, plus Bortles was the top pick of the draft, too. You know, you have four quarterbacks that should be pretty good in that division. I'm not giving Bortles any credit, but that defense is pretty darn good. you got three teams in there, but I'm going Houston right now in week number eight. In the West, Kansas City way ahead of the field in the West. Anybody changing off the Chiefs? No, nope, Chiefs for me. Monday Night Football last night beating the Broncos, getting it done. Was it last night, two nights ago? Whatever night that was that I was watching everything take place. Uh, the days run together, Mike Gill. Yes, last night. It, it was. was last night. <laughs> two wild card teams. Josh. I got, I'm going to go with the Bills. I'm putting them in for me. They finally have convinced me. They finally pulled me to their side of the fence. And I am begrudgingly putting this team in because... I look at the AFC, I have no confidence to anybody at this point beyond the Bills. So I guess I'll put the Ravens in just because. I misspoke earlier. I was staring right at the Texans logo as I proudly proclaimed the exploits of Tennessee. They were on a buy. <laughs> I have Buffalo and Houston as my wild card team. So I have Houston in the playoffs for all the reasons I spoke about. And I have the Titans in the playoffs because you don't lose your spot when you're on a buy. And I had them in there last week. How do you like them apples, Mike Gill? I like them a lot. I have Tennessee and Buffalo. They're the two. They're the two. Mariota and some other guy. <laughs> Playing quarterback for the Bills. <laughs> some other guy. All right. Th that AFC's got a bunch. I mean, every team in that to, in that conference is just bleh. All right. In the, in the NFC, uh, I got the Rams winning the West still. I've got Seattle winning the West still. I have Seattle still winning the West. I'm not moving off that boat yet. Uh, in the South, we've got Falcons with a win, Carolina with a win, Saints have won five. How do you not go to the Saints again? How do you not go back to a team that's won five in a row and a team that 
you know, quite frankly, is the surprise of, or one of the surprises. Eagles will probably be the biggest surprise to the national people that talk about football, but I'd say the Saints are right up there. If there's a 1-1A one and one a in the National Football Conference of teams that you didn't expect to be at this point, the Saints are one of them, having ripped off. They started 0-2. Who saw five wins coming? They are 3-1 and one on the road. They have the best point differential in the South. I am sticking with the Saints for a second straight week. I have been thoroughly impressed. I've got the Saints defense, guys. You know I like defense. Uh, their defense has been outstanding, and they've won five in a row. And the one thing that I like about this team is they're winning on the road now. That's something that the Saints typically, even when they're good, have trouble doing. Uh, let's go to the north. This is a tough one, guys. This is a division is, is that has it, maybe the worst quarterback play it collectively. Is really tough, though? Because once Aaron Rodgers went down and you saw what Detroit did, how do you not give it to the Vikings? Not that I'm like the president of the Case Keenum fan club or anything like that, but the Vikings have ripped off four wins in a row. How do you not give them the edge? Plus, I had them in there last week. I'm sticking with the Vikings. How about you, Josh? I'm sticking with the Vikings, too. I mean, uh, listen, you got a good defense. You got a running game. Case Keenum's not losing you any games. And the Lions haven't done anything to help their case at all. And the Packers with Brett Hundley, I mean, come on. Come on, man. Uh, I'm going with Minnesota because I like their defense the best. The quarterback play, again, if Matthew Stafford is anything that they paid him to be, he would lead them to this division. I don't think he's worth $27 million. Uh, in the East, 7-1 Philly and Dallas. It's a two-team race. Anybody, Josh, you've gone Philly most of the way. Pete Thompson. Uh, I got on the Philly bandwagon later than the two of you, but I've been on it ever since then. How can you not be? It wasn't their best win against the Niners, but guess what? It was a W. Eagles. Six in a row. Eagles. NFC East. Yeah, I've, I'm not changing the Eagles. They're the best team in the NFL. Uh, I'm going Eagles, too. It's been the last couple of weeks, and uh, they made that deal today. Uh, how about the wild cards? Two wild cards. This one's a little bit more difficult than the AFC here. You got some legit teams that you're leaving out. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this. I got the Rams still in the playoffs. I, I had that for the last couple weeks. I was flip-flopping throughout the day who I was going to pick here. I'm going to slide the Panthers in there because... Are you reading my notes? That's no, who no. I put in. I, I was more impressed with their win over the Bucks than I was with the Falcons' win over the Jets. And I'm not confident in the Cowboys that they can sustain wins for the rest of the season without Zeke. Yes. That's exactly Rams and Carolina for me as well. Rams certainly uh, their pedigree and their history. They've won two in a row now, and they look strong out there. I, I'm looking forward to the Rams Seahawks rematch. Let's put it that way. And then I had Dallas in last week as my other team. And last night somebody says, "Oh, you hear about Zeke?" And I feel like every day it's a, "Did you hear about Zeke?" So Dallas, you're out. Carolina, you're in. Uh, I've got Seattle in. And I have Dallas if Zeke's not suspended, and the Panthers <laughs> if he is suspended. So you suspended. basically did what we did. You just kind of picked two of them. Well, let me tell you, even if Zeke is not suspended. There's flaws there. There's some, yeah. They got some issues coming up here. Their schedule is Kansas City, at Atlanta, Philadelphia. You know, they play the Seahawks down the road. They got to go to Philadelphia. Somehow, they got to find you know, a way to get to about nine to ten who, wins. Who are you rooting for, Redskins or Cowboys, when you were kind of glancing at You that. had to root for the Red. I mean, even if you even if you said the Cowboys are my, you know, you, they're not existent in terms of how you feel about them. If you're an Eagles fan, you had to be rooting for the, 49, uh, the Redskins in that game. All right, that's our who's in, who's out on the Sports Bash Live, 97.3 ESPN. I'm going to go with Dallas, though, because I think Elliott's somehow going to weasel himself out of this again. <laughs> 